Chapter 20. The Great Trabum Lake. The twins barely slept after setting the royals and their friends on the circuit path, and both were up before sunrise. The few hours they managed to sleep were from worrying their bodies to the point of exhaustion and had little to do with rest. They met Mother Goose on the grand balcony of the fairy palace just as the sun rose over the fairy kingdom. She was prepping Lester to take them on their journey to the Trabum territory in the Elf Empire. I want you to listen to Connor and Alex and do exactly what they say. Fly very carefully and always be aware of the sky around you. And make sure every landing is safe and secure as possible, she instructed them. In other words, do everything you don't usually do for me. Lester nodded and ruffled his feathers, making them nice and fluffy for their upcoming flight. Are you sure you're up for this, Lester? Connor asked. We can take one of those enchanted swans if you're having a hesitation. Lester opened his beak and glared at him, insults insulted by the thought of it. He grabbed his own rinds of his mouth and shoved them to Connor's hand. He was definitely ready for this. I'll take that as a yes, Connor said with a laugh. He and his sister each swung a leg over the large goose. They sat on his back with Connor in the front. Our first stop is Travelin Territory, Lester, Alex said. And after that, I hope we'll be a successful visit. We'll be sure... Uh, We'll be on our way to the Elf Empire. Who's in charge of the Elf Empire, Connor asked. Mother Goose huffed easily just as the mention of it. Alvinia, the Elf Empress, she said. She's not a friend of yours, I'll take it, Connor said. Just be cautious around her, she warned them. Empress Alvinia is just as cunning as she is beautiful. She's like a poisonous flower, pretty and peaceful on the inside, but dangerous on the inside. Don't let her fool you. No matter what she promises, her loyalty will always be her own people before it is to the greater good. Connor gulped. Poisonous flower. Gotcha, he said. Elves are very sharp and known for their long memory, and boy, can they hold a grudge. Mother Goose continued. They'll be very hesitant at first to cooperate, but don't let it dishearten you. They've never forgiven the fairy council for never including them in the happily ever after assembly and have not talked to us since. If they haven't talked to you in a lo so long, what makes you think they'll talk to us, Alex asked. Mother Goose shrugged. Beats me, she said. Good luck, kiddos. I'll be right here as soon as you get back. Her words of advice did the opposite to comfort accompanied them. Lester took a few steps behind and stretched out his wings. He waddled forward and began flip flapping until he and the twins lifted off the balcony and flew into the sky. Soon, Mother Goose and the fairy palace were out of sight. Who would have thought you and I would be saving the world again soon after the last time? Connor said with a nervous laugh to bring attention. I always hoped the portal of, uh, between our worlds would reopen somehow, but never at this price, Alex said. It's like an eye for an eye. An eye for an arm is our trading standard. I know what you mean, Connor said, and the thought of something to lighten their spirits. Do you ever think about what our lives would be like if we had never discovered the land of stories? Do you ever wonder what you and I would be doing right now if Grandma and Dad weren't from the fairy tale world? Alex smiled at the thought. I'm probably thinking about colleges and careers instead of war and battles. Connor laughed at his own prediction. And I'd just be trying to survive algebra on an army of thousands. The sister laughed along, but her smiley quickly faded. They had experienced many extraordinary, extraordinary things, but had also given up a lot because of who they were. Think of all the normal teenage things we could be experiencing, she said with a sigh so heavy it was obviously carrying more than one thought. After this chapter of our lives, I wonder if I'll ever enjoy anything without the constant fear of losing it. By the way, Connor said, reading between the lines of what his sister was saying, who was that guy you were talking to last night in the fairy gardens? Connor felt his sister's body tense up behind him. What are you talking about? Alex said, attempt to play dumb. The boy in the gardens? Oh, you're talking about Rook Robbins, the farm boy from the Eastern Kingdom. He is just a friend I made recently. Rook Robbins, Connor said. He sounds like a baseball player. Are you sure he's just a friend? For a reason he couldn't explain, Constant Connor instantly disliked everything about the guy. Oh, please, Connor, Alex said defensively. 
as if I had time for anything like romance while joining the fairy council and leading the happily ever assem assembly into a war. Alex hated lying to her brother, but she would never hear the end of it if he knew the truth, especially if he knew her request for the reason she had missed his attempts in contacting her while he was in Germany. Connor was glad Alex was sitting behind him so she couldn't see the look of his given he was giving her. He knew exactly what was going on, whether his sister wanted to admit it or not. You know, you could tell me if he was more than a friend. I promise I won't I wouldn't tell mom, Connor said, already anxious to tell their mom everything he knew. Alex laughed it off. You'll be the first person to know if my relationship with Rook unexpectedly progresses into my thing. Anything more, but it doesn't look like that will be possible at the moment, she said sharply. That's good, but if he breaks your heart, I'll beat it up for you, Connor said. Alex burst into laughter. Now that's something I pay to see, she said, and quickly changed the topic so she'd feel less exposed. But while we're on the subject, I've been meaning to ask you, do you have a crush on your friend, Bree? Had Lester been a car, Connor would have slammed on the brakes. Instead, he abruptly grabbed hold of the reins and caused Lester to squawk. He blushed so much, Alex could see on the back of his neck and ears. Do I have a crush on Brie? Connor said like it was a perpetuous thought. Come on, Alex, just because I asked you a couple harmless questions about your love life doesn't mean you have to be rude. Alex grunted at the double standard her brother said, I'm not being rude, I'm just, I just figured I would ask since you turn bright red whenever you're around here or... Nam gets brought up, she pointed out. Last night when you hugged, you said goodbye. Hugged you goodbye. I thought your head was about to explode. I wouldn't be surprised if she had a crush on you, too. Connor started smiling and couldn't stop. Did Bree have a crush on him, too? He never thought it was a possibility until now. Had she traveled around Europe with him, not only because she wanted to have an adventure, but also she wanted to spend time with him? He quickly forced his smile to diminish when he remembered he was in the middle of defending himself. Rest assured, I don't have any feelings whatsoever for Bree, he said. To be honest, she was starting to get on my nerves when we went to Europe. The way she always second-guessed me. The way she remained so calm in any situation. The way she wore her hair in a beanie with her streaks of blue and pink in front. The fact that she prized me every day with new interesting fact about her life? It was also annoying. Alex didn't have to question further. It was obvious how Connor really felt. She was glad he couldn't see her raised eyebrows. Uh-huh. Sounds like you haven't given her much thought at all, she said. I'm actually glad there's nothing going on. Why is that? Connor asked and came overly defensive in the opposite direction now. You don't think I'm mature enough to have a crush on someone or for someone to have a crush on me? For your information, I'm a catch, too. No, Alex interrupted, because you're about to visit your old friend, Trobella, and we're not leaving without the support of her army, even if that means you have to marry her. Connor moaned a very long, weary sound under his breath. He had almost forgotten about the young troll queen who had been madly in love with him since they met. Gosh, I hope divorce exists in this world, he said. The twins remained fairly quiet for the remainder of their trip into the Traubon territory, fearing they would expose more about themselves than they were willing to. They knew each other so well, it was a wonder, it was a wonder why either tried fooling the, each other. The mountain boulders surrounded the Traubon territory, appeared on the horizon, and Lester began to gradually descend. As they flew closer, Connor was surprised to see what the land between the boulders that the land of the borders was covered in water. The entire territory looked like a massive above-ground pool. Wait a second, Connor said. They never drained their territory after the Enchantress flooded? it? Nope, Alex said. The fairies offered to completely restore the land, but Queen Trabella had something else in mind. What was that? He asked. You'll see, she said. Lester swooped the territory and landed smoothly in the water. He was like a miniature boat as they traveled across the lake, like the territory had become. No way, Connor said in shock when he saw what his sister was talking about. Queen Trovella had turned her territory into a vast floating city. Hundreds of forts crafted from the wreckage of their ruined underground home floated in the waters ahead of them. 
Trolls and goblins families occupied the smaller forts, with the larger forts served as common areas shared between them. Some of the goblins swam in fr from fort to fort while trolls glided over the water in wooden floating devices. Many sat on the edges of the forts with their enormous feet in the water and held fishing poles. Although the twins were pretty sure there were no fish to catch, the trolls and goblins were darker than usual now that they lived above the ground. The sun had tanned their skin to dark shades of green and blue and brown. Despite the environmental change, all the creatures looked incredibly bored as they drifted in the water. Alex and Connor floated past them with the giant goose, was the most interesting thing they had seen in weeks and caused quite the scene. They sure are hard up for entertainment, Connor said, and his sister nodded. The twins heard a familiar voice as a long and wide boat traveling toward them. Row, travelings, row, Queen Tribble ordered. She lay leisurely across the front of the boat and took in the sun. A dozen trolls and goblins were seen in the center of the boat and rowed long oars as they were ordered. The boat drifted slightly to one side since the trolls' arms were shorter. A young male troll said, stood in the back of the boat and monitored the rowers. He was a short and stout, just like Troll Ballot, and wore a large horned helmet and a breast pelt plate. And all the rowers came to an abrupt stop as soon as they saw the twins floating on Lester in the water behind beside them. They pointed at the large goose and whispered among themselves as the creatures on the surrounding fort's head. Did I say you could stop rowing? Troll Ballot said. When the roaring Roaring stalled to a halt. She gently sat up to see what the concern was. She cupped her ga gaping mouth when, with her eyelids on what the others had seen. Hey, Travella, the kind of said cheerfully with a wave. Miss me? Butter boy, she gasped. I'm really, am I really seeing you or are you a mirage in the water? He's here, Alex said. We're both here. But I thought I lost my butter boy forever, Trovella said in complete shock. He went home through that portal and I thought he'd never return. Was our love too strong for the portal to contain? Did our affection for each other break it open? Have you finally returned to be the king of the great Traven Lake? Um, no, Connor clarified, but the portal has been reopened. That's why I'm here. The great Traven Lake, huh, Alex asked. Is that what you're calling this place now? Yes, fairy girl, Trobella said with a scowl, and I expect all the maps to be changed at once. I once want, I've always wanted to live near water, and the Enchantress unintentionally made that dream come true. Now you must come aboard my boat so I can properly embrace my butter boy. Lester swarmed to the side of the boat, and Alex and Connor were helped aboard by two of the troll rowers. Trabella leaped into Connor like a spider monkey, hugging a tree and almost knocked them both into the water. He figured it would take her a while to let go, let him go, but she detached so much sooner than he expected. She looked up at him with her big eyes were full of concern rather than the usual lust. Something was different about Trobella, but the twins were too pressed for a time to find out what. Look, Trobella, Connor said. We come to talk to you. Something very bad has happened, and we need your help. Trobella put both her hands on her hips. It puts a strain on a relationship when you only come to share devastating news, butter boy, she said. Just once, I wish you'd bring flowers or chocolates instead. For the millionth time, we don't have a relationship, Connor said. Yes, I know our love is too strong for childish charms, she said. But our love is bottomless. It's forever. It's indestructible. Troll Queen suddenly burst into tear. Trobella, what's the matter with you? Alex says. There's something my butter boy must know before we speak any further, Trobella said. While you're gone, I found someone else. What? The twins said together. This is the last thing that I had expected to come out of the Troll Queen's mouth. Trobella's eyes darted around the boat guiltily, and she turned away from them. What she had confessed was too painful to say while looking them in the eyes. I knew after you disappeared into another dimension forever, it would be challenging to keep our love alive. I tried to stay faithful to you for as long as I could, and it was the hardest six days of my life. I was weak without you, Butterboy, and my heart strayed. 
I couldn't bear the thought of being alone forever, so I gave my heart to someone else. Alex and Connor exchanged the same dumbfounded look. With anything else going on in the moment, Connor was surprised how much relief he felt upon hearing this. I always thought that one day, if the impossible should happen, you return to me, I could easily give my heart back to you. But seeing you now, in you in front of me, I realized I was mistaken, Trobella said. Once I invest in my love in someone, I cannot get my love back unless I know it's a dead end. I'm afraid I plan a long, joyous road with my lo new love. Okay, I've got to know, who is this poor guy? Connor couldn't help but ask. His name is Gator, and he commands my army as well as my heart, Trobella said. She dreamy looked at the back of the her boat and waved at the small troll in the horned helmet. Gator waved back uncomfortably. Apparently, respiration wasn't something Trobella looked for in a relationship. Congratulations, Connor said to both of them. But I failed you, butter boy, Trobella said, and she fell to her knees. I promised myself our love would be eternal, and I've broken that vow. You'll never love anyone else as much as you love me. I feel so terrible to leave you alone in this cruel world. Please tell me if there's anything I can do to make it up to you. Alex nudged Connor and cleared her throat. <clears throat> this was their chance. I don't know, Connor said, and gave his best heart in performance. I'm in shock, complete shock. My heart feels like it's been ripped out of my chest, trampled by a stampede of wolves, and chewed by an ogre. I'm going to need some time to get over this. But is there something you could do for him that would make him feel much better in the meantime, Alex said, trying to speed things up. Oh yes, better boy, Trobella. Gravel to a seat. I do anything to ease your broken heart. Please, the guilt is too much to bear. Just say the word. Well, Connor said melodramatically. If you're serious about healing my emotional wounds, mending the pieces of my heart and sewing the seams of my soul, access to your army would help me greatly. You want my army? Trobella asked. She looked up at him questioningly. Even her butter boy might have overstepped his boundaries with this request. Yes, but there's a bigger reason why we need it, Connor said. Trobella, an army of thousands of men and has invaded this world, and they plan on taking over. Alex tries to explain, but Trobella interrupted. Hush, fairy girl, the troll queen demanded. This has nothing to do with you. Keep your want out of our business. Connor rolled his eyes and gestured to her brother to explain the rest. Connor quickly told her about the Grand Army and how they need the Troblins to help them. His explanation may not have captivated the Troll Queen, but it sparked the interest of all the other creatures around. I'll go, said one of the Roaring Goblins. That sounds terrific, an eavesdropping troll from one of the for forts nearby. I'm not even the army, but I'll help you fight, said a desperate goblin. Me too, said another troll. The twins were so excited to see their enthusiasm. Life on a floating city must have been really dull if the idea of war sounded intriguing. Trollbella squinted and crossed her arms and sh she thought about it. But still, an army in exchange for a bro broken heart it seems like a pretty steep deal, she said. Without missing a beat, Connor clutched his chest and fell to a deck of pain. Oh, my broken heart. It hurt so much. Oh, the pain. The miserable pain, he screamed. Your heart's on the other side of your chest, Connor, Alex whispered down him, and he quickly made the correction. Tears formed in Trobella's eyes at the sight of her butter boy in pain she had caused him. Oh no, butter boy, she said, and rushed to her side. If my army will help you ease your pain, then my army you should have. Connor quickly sat up, completely fine. Oh, thank goodness, he said. I really appreciate it. Now we need to gather up your army and fill them in our plan as soon as possible. Queen Trobella got to her feet to address the roars aboard on her boat. Take us to the army for at once, travel, and she ordered, My butter boy needs to speak with our army and start his healing process. The troll and goblin roars turned the boat completely around and head to the direction of the army float. Alex gestured to Lester to follow the boat and help Connor to his feet. Nice going, she whispered to his ear. Thanks, Connor said, and his face fell into a pout. What's wrong, she said. We recruited the Trollet army, and it was easier than either of us expected. I know, Connor said sadly. I just can't believe Trollbella picked that troll over me. 
All right, that is the end of chapter 20. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe here for more of the Leona stories, Grim Morning, and more books to come. Also, if you like the video, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. And more importantly, if you have any good reading for me in the future, don't forget to comment below any good recommendations for me to read in the future. But overall, I hope you enjoyed the reading and hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!